The Apollo 13 astronauts, spacecraft commander Jim Lovell, lunar module pilot Fred Hayes, and command module pilot Jack Swigert are in no immediate danger. Hayes and Lovell are inside Aquarius, their command module. Uh, Swigert is inside uh, Odyssey, the command module, we should say, they're in Aquarius, the lunar module. Uh, Hayes and Lovell are existing, living, breathing, uh, the lunar module's oxygen supply. Swigert is living off uh, the command module's oxygen supply, but in reality, the supplies of both vehicles are being traded off since the lithium hydroxide, the air purifying canisters of the LEN, weren't activated. The astronauts didn't have enough time to do that. So the command module's uh, air purifying canisters that remove carbon dioxide from the air are purifying the LEM's air, and both spacecraft docked together in an attitude like this, have the tunnel open, the hatch open, with two astronauts in the lunar module, one astronaut in the command module. Now, the, the critical decision still has not been made as to which area of the Earth to attempt to get the astronauts back to. Spacecraft uh, uh, Apollo program director Jim McDivitt, we should say, we still think of him as an astronaut from his Apollo 9 flight, was very strong, very firm, that there is enough oxygen supply for the astronauts to live on to again safely get back to Earth. He said there's a small margin left and there's a a small margin of electrical supply left. So, what is being debated now by Kraft, Schoberg, McDivitt, those very people you saw on that news conference, is when to do this burn, this uh, descent power system engine burn of the LEM, of the LEM engines, when to do it and wha what area of the Earth to strike for. Uh, we should point out that the SPS engine, the service propulsion system engine of uh, the command module, and this is very much the attitude of the vehicle, the way it looks now, this is the service propulsion system engine. That engine is unusable. Whatever catastrophe, or whatever near catastrophe, took place up there some five hours ago happened back here in the service module. Remember now, we have two vehicles. This is the Apollo command module that the three astronauts were living in at the time it, uh, the emergency took place. Lovell and Hayes had just crawled back from the lunar module, remember that's docked with the lunar module, and gotten back into their Odyssey command module. As they got back in, they heard a loud bang. It was an explosion. It happened back here in the service module, which contains their breathing oxygen. It contains the hydrogen, the oxygen for the fuel cells, the electrical supply that power up this engine, that give them radios, lighting, everything else they need to live with inside the command module. Whatever happened there, whether it was an explosion, whether a line ruptured, a tank blew up, it knocked out the fuel cells and began bleeding off their oxygen supply at the same time. And the decision was made to abort the flight. The question was how to save the lives of the astronaut. Now, the burn is expected. Our emergency took place at about 55 hours into the flight at about 10 p.m. tonight. The bailout burn, we should call it, though that's not the true name, the emergency burn of the dips engine, is expected at around 79 hours into the flight at about 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow night. The question is how to do it exactly and where to strike for. There are two choices that confront the officials of the space agency. The first choice, if they do the burn at 9.30 p.m. tomorrow night, would land the astronauts at a total elapsed time, a GE time as you, GET time as you'll hear it referred to, or ground elapsed time, of 142 hours. That's around 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Friday afternoon. It would land them on what's called the MPL, or the Mid-Pacific Line, uh, very much in areas we're used to from previous Apollo lunar flights. But if things, continue to, if, if things continue to go bad, if any more developments go haywire aboard the spacecraft, they would then strike for an immediate board. And uh, that abort would burn, would be performed at about 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and they would strike for a landing area in the mid-Atlantic, the landing area which we've just projected in our own charts here, shows them east of Rio de Janeiro and South America, in this area in the mid-Atlantic. The problem is, as, as Flight Control Operations Director Sig Schoberg stated, is that there's no recovery force there. There's no Navy ships in this area, and indeed NASA is now searching for what they call ships of opportunity, merchant vessels or anything that might be available in that area to pick up the astronauts or could get there in time in a day and a half or two to pick them up if indeed the Atlantic landing zone is decided on. Obviously, the Pacific landing zone is the one that's favored. Now. Going into the other facts, uh, as they're known so far, the failure was in the service module we told you about. Uh, they should have enough electrical supply to last them throughout the mission. Uh, they're using the electrical system of the lunar module now to power the lunar module and supply a minimal amount of power to the command module itself with Jack Swigert. Uh, 
They're using oxygen from both vehicles, and they're using the air purifying system of the lunar module.